Hello everyone. My name is Melinda Hart. You are watching Stamping with Hart. I am an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! And today we are going to take our Stampin' Blend coloring. That's alcohol marker coloring up a notch. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to be using two different stamp sets today um, to demonstrate this new technique that I am trying and learning. Uh, we are going to be working with Pampered Pets. We are also going to be working with Easter Friends. Okay, so <clears throat> this stamp set can be found in the annual catalog. This stamp set can be found in our mini catalog, January to June. 2022. Now, <clears throat> they're both fabulous stamp sets to use for whatever your favorite coloring technique is. It's going to be all about alcohol markers today. So <clears throat> with the different types of artwork that we have here, we have something called, you know, line art, where there is very little shading in, you know, it's left up to the person who is stamping and coloring the image to add as much or as little uh, dimension as they want. So here is an example of the cat where we have this basic black line. We're going to be using our um, Memento Tuxedo Black um, ink to do our stamping today because this is compatible with alcohol markers. Um, <clears throat> but then we have this type of artwork. Um, this is something that I believe is the uh, distinctive line from Stampin' Up! where they add a lot of the shadow and highlight for us in the artwork. So here is an example of the little chicks right here. This is the full color stamp and then this was stamped off once. So that one is slightly lighter in color, but you can see there's all kinds of shading and detail here on the chick than there is here. So for me, whenever we are doing alcohol markers, if you are new to it or you're just learning, um, you know, this is almost like a guide or a cheat sheet of telling us where our shadow and highlight is. And with something like this, it's a basically a clean slate and we can do whatever we want. So here we have the dog and let me just show him here. So he's right here, really, really adorable. <clears throat> now, admittedly, my stamp and blend game is not top notch. And that is something that I have been wanting to improve. So I usually do like one dimensional coloring. Basically, I usually keep it really simple where I take a marker and I'll show you guys. Um, I take a marker and I color the whole image with one color and then I will take a, a deeper color and just kind of go over or trace the line art just to kind of give it a teeny tiny bit of dimension. But on this one, you can see a distinct difference with the artwork here. So from this guy to our super basic coloring to this guy. So I'm excited to do this particular technique with you um, in our video today. All right, so I will include um, links in the description of this video of where you can shop with me if you are interested in shopping these products. I will also include a link to get signed up to my email list. We're going to start with our Memento Tuxedo Black ink. This is a water based ink and water based ink actually works well with alcohol based markers. So <clears throat> you basically want the opposite with your ink pad of the coloring tools that you're working with. Um, so you'll see here on the back, it says um, it's acid free, fade resistant, water based, fast drying dye ink. Okay, so that way you know it's gonna work with your Stampin' Blends. If you were doing, um, if you were doing water coloring, for example, 
you would not want to use memento because it's water-based so you would want the opposite um, which in this case would be like uh, stays on ink um, so that the water doesn't blend with the ink so it's exactly the same with the alcohol markers and I know that sounds a little confusing but this way they don't compete with each other and they don't try to blend with each other so definitely want water-based ink with alcohol-based markers so these are our stamp and blends um, i'm going to be using several different colors today so for the first three i'm going to be using our new stamp and blends um, and these are numbers 400 600 and 800 now i know that the stamp and blends the, the new ones anyway are on back order so you could always use uh, some of the different browns, soft suede, crumb cake, you know, whatever colors that you have on hand that you want to play with. Um, bronze would be a good one. Ivory, uh, you could work with those. I'm also going to be working with the grays, but we're going to start here. So the way that I would typically use Stampin' Blends, and the first thing I want to say about this is there is nothing wrong with very basic coloring. There is nothing wrong. This is what we do for something that we enjoy, right? It is from the heart, it is handmade. However you choose to color your items, don't feel guilty about it, don't feel like it's not good enough. Just really enjoy your process and when you're ready to learn and move to the next step, that's when you'll do that. So the Stampin' Blends have two tips. They have like this uh, brush tip here and then they also have this bullet tip. Okay, so I'm gonna be using the brush tip for this particular um, technique, okay? But I would typically take the, the larger tip side and just color in the whole dog, okay? Just really basic coloring. Okay, so it is very one dimensional. Doesn't look anything like this, okay? So this is like standard for me. And this is what we're gonna step up to today. So I would then take my next, um, you know, my next shade up, or if there were a combination of shades, I would take the bullet tip side and I would start tracing the line art just like I said okay maybe get a little bit more exaggerated where he has like the shaggy hair or she okay so just depending and we would just add a little bit of extra color there and just squiggle and that would be it okay so as as minimum as you could possibly get which there's nothing wrong with but I really want to show this because of what we're going to do next, just so that you understand the difference. Um, if and when you are ready to get started with the markers or kind of step up the game with the markers. All right. So I am learning this myself. I've been taking a course on this. So here um, we're going to do a much more detailed version of the dog. And the concept is that we are adding fur, we are adding texture, we're adding shadow and highlight, and we're creating all of that on our own because this is a line art image and no shadow has been created for us. Okay, so we can choose which way the light is hitting the dog and that will determine how we color. And to keep it as simple as possible, I just wanted to do it so that the light was coming straight at the dog so that the highlight would just be right in the center. So that's where we are going to start. We are going to start with our lightest shade, which in this case is 800. I am going to trim off the simpler dog and we'll just leave him up here. Okay, we could always do something with that later. Now, the way that I was learning this, we're gonna do something called flicks, um, flicking. And we're gonna do it consistently in one direction. And we definitely want this detailed tip for the flicking. Um, we're supposed to, according to my, um, my lesson, always flick up 
and never down because we have more control flicking up than we do flicking down. Now I can tell you when I was coloring my project, I had a tendency to flick up and down. So it's a learning process, but basically we're gonna rotate our image so that we can stay as consistent as possible. We're gonna do this in layers. So we're gonna go from light to medium to dark. So I'm gonna start with flicking um, in an upward direction. I'm gonna keep my fingers really close to the bottom of my pen or the bottom of my marker. And I'm going to try to keep it as straight as I can instead of going sideways with it because we don't want a thick line like this. We want a thin concentrated line. So I'm going to hold it really close like this and I'm just gonna start at the base of the paws and work my way up. So the concept here is when you are flicking, you go in more broad strokes with the lightest color. So we're gonna take our strokes up pretty high here, okay? So we're gonna work on one section at a time. So I'm now gonna go to the other paw and do the same thing, just flicking upward. We're now gonna go to the belly and flick, okay? And we're gonna keep in mind that highlight. So we're gonna leave a part of this white to start right where the light would be hitting the dog, which in this case would be center. So we're just gonna be mindful of that as we color. It's okay if it's not perfectly straight, we just wanna try to keep a highlight there. And now I'm gonna do this part of the leg. And I'm gonna do the tail. Okay, so instead of me starting to come down and flick, we're gonna rotate the image now and we're gonna repeat that same process. I'm gonna start at the neck, right under the collar. And I'm gonna start flicking, keeping my fingers really close to the base of that marker and trying to keep my marker as up in the air or as vertical as possible. We're gonna work on this part of the leg now. I'm just doing really small strokes there. And I'm gonna start working my way down the back. Anytime I feel like the flicks are too thick, I'm just gonna kind of readjust and try to go lighter. So this is where our highlight is basically. Okay, and so now I'm gonna start coming down the face here and down the ears. Now there's gonna be some curvature in the face, so you're gonna see some slight curving with the flicks here. Okay, and then I'm gonna rotate it back around again, and I'm gonna do this part of the neck, always trying to flick in the same direction always trying to flick upward. And I'm not gonna speed this up, I'm gonna do this real time um, so that you guys can do this too if you want to, okay? You can always fast forward um, if it's going a little too slow for you. But I really want you to get the, you know, the feel and the concept of this. So for the most part, I'm pretty much just gonna color in the ear here um, on the top, but that is the concept of what you do. So we can start building our color now. Um, I'm gonna do some flicks here, with the shaggy part of his face, okay. There we go. And we're gonna bring in our next shade up, so like a medium tone. And for this case, um, for both of the images that I'm coloring, here is an example of the gray. I don't know if I had a chance to show you that. A light, a medium, and a dark, if you will. And for my middle shade, for this dog, we're gonna do 600. We're gonna literally repeat that process. 
with our darker color. And it's okay to get variations of color in there. And we're just going to build on that color. So same, same exact concept. Get that belly, get that tail. I'm not going to go up as much. Um, let's do the chest right here. I'm going to rotate this around now. We'll start flicking this down. I'm going to go down the back. Okay, and then um, this is where I have that I have that tendency to want to go in the opposite direction, but it's important to stay in the same direction. So I'm going to rotate it around and now I'm going to start working up at the neck. Okay, and let me go back around here. Okay, I feel like I want to put a little more color right around this ear here. Even though it's like tiny little flicks, I am still trying to do it in that same coloring style. Okay. And then we're going to go to our darkest shade, which in this case is 400. And we're going to start in the same place. We're going to start at the base. And just build. And if you um, color outside of the lines, it's okay. We're going to use our color lifter um, if we need to fix anything. We're going to try to get that same coloring technique going here. Okay, and now I'm going to start coming down from the neck. It's okay if you get some on the collar. We can always fix that. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to go right in here. And now I'm going to go to the other side of that collar and start flicking up. I'm going to flick here. Okay. <clears throat> so next I'm going to go back to my lightest color and we're going to build. Now, when I was learning, um, I was basically, they were saying not to go over darker colors with lighter colors because it will bleach it out. It's just um, unnecessary. But when I was trying this technique, I really felt like I needed to go over it a couple of times until I kind of got it to that place where I was happy with it. Um, so I am going over but if you are you know more seasoned than I am 
at the alcohol markers and the techniques and the blending. Um, you know, you'll, you'll probably be thinking like, why am I, why am I going over the darker color? Um, but for me, just in, in learning these techniques and kind of going through this process, it just made me feel better. See, even as I start talking, I start to forget about that process of rotating. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of flick and blend here. And that was just kind of my way of achieving this look and kind of blending in those darker and lighter colors together. But the techniques that I was seeing by the experts were incredible. So um, I'm not saying they're wrong. Uh, I'm just saying I'm not quite there yet with my coloring journey, but it was amazing to see. Okay, so I'm just gonna rotate this down and keep flicking and blending. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm gonna start flicking downward again. This is with that lightest color, this is with 800. Just trying to build on that texture. Still trying to keep that highlight in the center of the dog. I'm going back to the middle color now. So this is that middle shade, 600. Okay, and then I'm just gonna kind of follow that same process. This is definitely a technique where you want to have patience or you want to have time to work on the project. Just gonna do some flicks right around the nose and the eye here. I'm going to try to keep this eye white. <clears throat> oh, I'm, I'm going in the wrong, I'm going in the wrong direction. So if you catch yourself doing that, it's not the end of the world. Um, but just try to be aware. <laughs> just try to be aware of the fact that you're doing that. Okay, and then let me just bring that around. so that all of our flicks are looking consistent and in the right direction. I'm going in with that lighter color one more time. <clears throat> I'm gonna start coloring in a little bit more along the highlight. I still want that to be the lightest point, but I don't want it to be perfectly white. I just wanna have a little bit of color there. I know that when some people are leaving their um, highlights that they do leave um, touches of white, but I didn't want to leave it completely white. Okay, and now I'm going to take that darkest color, 400, and we're going to do lower down so we're not going to bring the strokes up as much keep them a little more concentrated down by the feet so we're starting to create that dimension And then down the back again <clears throat> and you can see the way that that is really starting to look like hair so 
just depending on the amount of patience that you have, I'm doing that in the wrong direction. And you can see they look different when you're doing it that way. So that is definitely true what they said about flicking from the top versus flicking from the bottom. Like, I think that they're absolutely right about that. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to do some detail work with the, the nose and the eyes and the mouth um, in a different color. But in terms of our browns and our shades for our dog and everything like that, we just want to get it to a place where we are happy. Okay. So let me just add in some of that darker. Okay. So <clears throat> under the chin, it would be a little, you know, slightly darker. Um, you know, anywhere where there were like nooks, we would have it just be a little bit darker. You can come back in and layer this as many times and with as many strokes as you want. And if you feel like it's too dark, you can go over it with a lighter color and that will help to start bleaching that back out. Okay, so if that looks too contrasty or too dark, then we're going to just go back to that lighter color. We don't need the color lifter yet. Um, and then we're just going to do our strokes again. Try to leave that area where it's going to be the lightest. And you will see that starting to blend. Okay, so <clears throat> according to the class, we're supposed to try to avoid that. But if you're not quite, you know, perfect yet, or you need to practice at this um, particular coloring technique, I would say, you know, don't don't be afraid to do that. <clears throat> so I'm going to go in with my lighter color here and blend that. <clears throat> okay, and I'm really starting to love the way that this looks. I think we can really start to see that texture there with the hair and the, um, the highlight and the color, I really feel like he is coming to life. So now um, I am gonna use my grays. I'm gonna do Smoky Slate Dark or Dark Smoky Slate, just whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna use that brush tip side. We're gonna start coloring in the nose. Okay, and now I'm going to get my basic black light. We're going to go to the side of this nose and make that a little bit darker. Okay, we're going to leave a little bit of that lighter color at the end there. I'm going to go into the eyebrow, same basic black light. Just give a little color there. And then for the mouth, with that basic black light, I'm just going to add a pop of color there. You can make the color of the collar whatever you want. Um, <clears throat> I think I'm going to go with Poppy Parade. Okay, so we're going to use Poppy Parade Dark for the collar. Now you could get into um, shading and everything on the collar as well. I'm gonna let the, the hair and the highlight on the dog just kind of be the focus here. So I'm just gonna keep that coloring really basic. But you can see the difference from this guy to this guy. I mean, look at that. So that is the flicking technique um, you know, you just want to choose where the light would be hitting your image. In this case, the light would be coming straight at the dog. We're going to do our highlight just right through the middle of his body. We're going to layer those three colors, starting with the lightest, adding the medium, going back in with that darker color with the lightest, the, the longest strokes with the medium about halfway strokes. And then with the dark, 
less. So closer to the feet, closer to the bottom, closer along the edges of the lines. And if you make a mistake or if you feel like there's too much, then you would just go back through with your lighter color and blend that out. So I don't think that there's anything wrong with that, but eventually with this technique, you shouldn't even need to do that. Once you get your layers and your flicking technique down, you won't need to go back through and lighten or change or erase anything. Let's take a look at the bunny from Easter Friends. Uh, and we're gonna recreate this here. This is the original stamp in Memento Tuxedo Black. Fine, just as it is. If you want to add dimension um, for the appearance of it being a little more three-dimensional, then you can do this version, which is what we're gonna be doing here. Very similar technique. Um, I did curve it in a little bit more for this bunny, and I really did try to follow the shadows of the artist who created Easter Friends, okay? Uh, so this stamp here. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. <clears throat> we're gonna stamp our bunny twice. So we're gonna do the original stamp. And we're just gonna ink this up. Make sure we get everything. All right, and then we're gonna stamp. And we're gonna stamp again. <clears throat> now, it's the lighter image that we are gonna work with so that we can add a little bit more color um, and the shadow not be so pronounced. So we're still using all of the artwork as a guide, um, but it's not as bold as this one is, okay? So we can color both so that you can see the difference and what that looks like, but we're gonna start with the stamped off version because this is also the stamped off version. Okay, so we are gonna start with gray granite light. We're gonna start with that brush tip again, and you can see my brush tip has kind of been through it. Um, and we're just gonna start that flicking technique. And again, always try to flick bottom to top, longer strokes with the lightest color. And we're gonna do that light, medium, dark again. Um, so we'll just kind of do it in steps all throughout this image until we get that appearance of dimension and fur okay so i'm just going to start and you can see all of the artwork is at a similar angle as well so we're just going to start flicking we're going to try to hold this close to the tip we're going to try to keep our marker as vertical as possible and we're just going to start flicking Okay, so this is Smoky Slate Light. <clears throat> and we're gonna start flicking up. This is our medium shade. So we're not gonna go up quite as far. Now, <clears throat> I am following the artist in terms of where their shadow is, but I am making it a little more round, um, going sort of curvature this way, instead of everything going sideways.
Now here with the cheeks, we're gonna start separating out that definition because right now it looks like the bunny has a beard. So we're gonna start flicking upward and giving those cheeks some roundedness. Okay, and then we're gonna go in around the eye. So I'm gonna rotate this. <clears throat> Same here. For our darkest shade for the bunny, we're gonna use Smoky Slate Dark instead of Basic Black. We're gonna try really hard to stick with our grays. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the bottom, back to the base. So now we're gonna go back in with our lightest shade, gray granite light, and we're gonna start adding in another layer, blending this out. And let me go back for my gray granite light. Okay, <clears throat> I love the way that this is building out. So we're gonna start adding some pops of accents here. So I am gonna take my basic black light for the eye, well, both eyes, I should say, and we're just gonna add in that color. No flicking for this one. Okay, <clears throat> didn't get that perfect, but just so that it looks pretty close. <clears throat> and now for here, for the nose, we're gonna do the Smoky Slate Dark. For the mouth, we're gonna do Smoky Slate Light. Isn't that cute? Okay, <clears throat> and then we're gonna take our gray granite light and we're gonna start bringing that nose up. Just flicking upward there. Okay, all right. <clears throat> so let's go back around one more time and again sideways that's a thicker line we want to try to keep it thin
but let's take a look at that. Definitely a little bit more um, definition on this bunny rabbit, this little Easter friend, uh, than this one. <clears throat> this one is more gray granite heavy, and this one is a little bit more smoky slate heavy. But in the end, if you take a look at that coloring, just depending on what you would prefer, okay, here is the original stamped image. Here is that three-dimensional coloring technique there where we're kind of getting that fur in there. And if you want to see a version of what this would look like, if it was just one of the colors, let's just color this in solidly with gray granite. Okay, so Easter Friends does not have a coordinating die set, but Pampered Pets does. Uh, Pampered Pets goes with what's called the Pets dies. Okay, so here is your more one-dimensional coloring. Here is that more multi-dimensional coloring. And then I'm trying to find my dark gray granite. Let's see if this is it, yeah. So if we wanted to add just a little bit of shadow, with our dark gray granite without doing the flick, just literally following the artist and their shadow. This is pretty much exactly what I would normally do. Okay. Really wanted to step up my game here. Let's do a little bit of shadow here on the paws. <clears throat> and I'll blend that out with the regular gray granite. So my regular gray granite is here. So then I would sort of go back through and combine those two colors so that they didn't look so contrasty. And that would pretty much be it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so there you go. That shows you your difference between just the stamped image, 2D coloring, gray granite light, gray granite dark, and then our multi color coloring. For those of you who have stuck around to the end, uh, this is the actual card making process. So you are going to need your stamp in, uh, die cut and emboss machine. I'm using the full size here because I'm going to be using the stitched rectangles as well as the tasteful labels dies. Um, what you're seeing here is me creating a pattern with the pets dies, which coordinate with pampered pets. Um, this little paw print, this trio of paw prints was so adorable. I just decided to make a, a pattern on this designer series paper. This is the, um, I think it's pattern play or pattern party designer series paper pack. It's a hostess designer series paper pack. You could also use the all together um, designer series paper if you own that. That also has some great black and white patterns to it. Um, I wanted black, white, and red for the theme of the uh, pet card, the dog card. So I use Poppy Parade as my pop of color there. Um, these are standard size card bases. So um, four and a quarter by five and a half or scored at um, five and a half inches. So the full card size is 11 inches. You cut a piece of cardstock in half and then you get two card bases out of that. Um, my layer is four by five and a quarter, both the white, the basic white piece, which is the underlay of the black piece so that those paws shine through. This is the tasteful label dies. Um, just popping that up on dimensionals. <clears throat> Pampered Pets had a trim set that had this, um, twine as well as that stitched ribbon, that thin stitched ribbon. And I highly recommend those. Uh, all of the Pampered Pets, Pets Dyes, and the trim are in the annual catalog. 
Now we're popping over to our Easter card and my color theme for this is gray granite, fresh freesia, and basic white. So here I am cutting a stitched rectangle and a tasteful label die, um, which we're gonna use for layers. And now I'm cutting the larger rectangle pieces that are gonna be the layers on my card. I'm using the fresh freesia ribbon. I'm fussy cutting out my bunny, as you can see. Um, we don't have dies to coordinate with this, but absolutely love the way he looks. Or of course, you could just cut him out in a rectangle if you don't wanna do the fussy cutting. I stamped in fresh freesia, so all of that coordinated. And that is the fresh freesia pattern. I used both sides. So one is the plaid and one is this other designer um, paper. It's just the reverse side and it has a really cute Easter look. I love the way that the ribbon turned out on this. Just a really pretty card. Now, I, when I was recording, I didn't get a chance to show the background stamping, which was just another sentiment um, in gray granite. So just tone on tone. And these are the pastel pearls. Um, absolutely love the way these cards turned out. Love this three dimensional pattern. I apologize for my uh, lighting getting bright there. Um, in the end, I'm not quite sure what was going wrong with my lighting, but by that time it was evening when I was filming. So um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you like crafting tutorials. Give this video a like if you would like to see more alcohol marker tutorials for me and be sure to stay tuned to the next video.